Hi, everybody. Welcome to Pagan. Uh, Pagan. I almost did it again. Habit. It's not quite certain because I haven't done it for 30 days yet. It's Pagan World Radio, and I'm here tonight as your host as the Pagan across the world today. I want to thank you, everybody, who's given me such a warm reception. Uh, 11 shows in, um, and now I'm doing one of my favorite people, and I'll be talking about it in a minute. But let me go ahead and give you a heads up on some of the news of the day. Um, really, right now, there isn't a lot being said. There are a lot of Christmas events this year, so go ahead and look up your Christmas events. And if you've got a Christmas event or any event at all you want to put in there, please put it into Pagan World. We have events there, and we're going to continue to cover them in all the different ways that we do. Pagan's Tonight Television will be uh, tonight will be Tarot Thursdays. Follow our show with uh, Brian Ellicott is the guest, and I don't know if he's a guest anymore as a co-host. And Mary Hawk tomorrow night will be uh, the International AIDS Day, which will be led by Brian Ellicott again as we speak to him, Reverend Ellicott on Pagan World TV in honor of the a- Day of AIDS. And after that will be Lolan uh, Seen on the radio. So, But first, let me go ahead and tell you a little bit about the gentleman uh, that we're talking about. Sir Rolando Gomacaman, also known as a poo. He's been known as a lot of things. But what he is now known today is a man who is seeking... Let me rephrase that. I know, don't yell at me. He does not identify by his gender. He is a being of incandescent light. He he describes the part of they. So let me go ahead. This being, this individual, is totally of peace and energy. And he is one of the strongest individuals I've seen in carrying out what has become deeply part of not just the war- Corellian tradition, but the world itself. And that is peace. Hello, Rhonda. Hello. Good evening to you, Sir Ed, and to everyone here at Pagan World Radio. And it's nice to be here, to be part of the pagan world. Well, thank you. And so right now it's 8 p.m. here in Chicago, but it is 8 a.m. It's always found it very fast. So you're exactly 12 hours ahead of me. Actually, um, 14 hours. It's already 10 a.m. here. <laughs> is it? So, yes. Actually, it's central time. Um, 12 hours on Eastern, um, 14 hours oh. on central time. But it's so Ooh, amazing that- because... We could cross beyond the boundary of time and space. That's it. And so let's go ahead and talk. You have been doing peace activities. You're now head of the International Order of Peace Weavers? Yes, yes, it is. And so what um, is a peace weaver? Let's go ahead and actually, start with the hard stuff. Yeah, actually it started by Reverend Terry Helton Ott. But now mm-hmm. she retires in office because of her illness. But she is still our advisor. No? She is helping me out uh, to continue the work of peace prayer, of peace weaving. Actually, being a peace weaver, uh, we are dedicated on influencing or leaving an imprint or energy imprint to the world so that people experience peace. It's either through prayer, through doing meditation, um, Reiki, healing, artwork, music, dancing, etc., etc. No, but I don't know how to draw. I don't know how to sing. But what I could do is talk about peace and pray for peace and for everyone. Actually, uh, I was in the Order of Peace Weaver since 2013, and from that time, I I received many messages from all around the world asking for prayer and they would also invite me to their place but unfortunately <laughs> due to monetary constraint no we were not able to come to have they think that we are just like an evangelist of talking and peace and how each everyone could have peace in their life so even that simple messages of peace could touch their life and change them so that's why I pray that I could have this consistency, this endurance, this bravery, and this courage, as well as strength in doing our peace work in the Order of Peace Weaver. And of course, I am so thankful to the Corellian tradition for the undying support to the Order. And right now, we are placed as a primary mission or ministry of the tradition on weaving peace. And that's essential. 
Um, so you were in Chicago for the Parliament of World's Religions. And let me go ahead and set this. I mean, you have all the leadership in the world, and he has been really kind of – he was hugged, he was loved, and everything else. But one of the things you, we were talking about is – we were talking about before the show, we've talked about it before, and you saw it on the internet. You spent a lot of time in the streets of Chicago. Not only did <laughs> yes. you, you – know, and, and I think that's a wonderful thing. Because um, I think – well, let's talk about it because I believe in street ministries. I, I very much believe in street ministries. Actually, cause, uh, the reason why, no, I believe those people within the Parliament of World Religion, they are all uh, light up. They are all enlightened one, no. So I don't want to add my love light to them because they already see the light. So what I did when I was in Chicago, in Chicago, aside from enjoying the venue and the opportunity of going to America, I reached out to people that need the light. You know? And I see them, the first day that I saw, I was so thirsty and I don't know where is the convenience store. So I walked down the street and I saw a family, you know? a Latino family. I, I think from I, I forgot what island or Caribbean island no and there is a two years old boy that is selling on the street so I was so shocked because it is also common here to have that but they are I think they are homeless but they have this ability to sell to knock on the doors of cars if if and offer a drink if they want so I buy from them and try to communicate with them, to talk with them, with the mothers, how long they have been there. So, so as when, so the parliament is almost five days now. So every day there are new experiences. I was able to walk on the downtown, and I I was able to pass through the Chicago Police District. I don't know which area was that, but when walking, I saw that there are many people. Uh, Outside. So, the, for those of you, department. so that was District 1 in Chicago. That was District 1, the 11th and State Street, the one closest out mm-hmm. there. So, yes. So, yes. It's actually it's a, it's a pretty prominent police station. Uh, police group. Yeah. Okay. Continue. Yeah. On that police station, there were many people, which is, I think, Latino speaking Spanish. I think they had this, uh, have an accident of fire. So it seems that they are putting their beds on the street. And there is a one mother trying to tame her baby crying and was hurt. So I sit down with them and do healing. And the mother was, was happy because the baby was fine. And how much I wanted to communicate with them, but I didn't know how to speak Spanish. But the action speaks louder than words. It means the act of our kindness could touch their lives. Even though we speak differently, the barrier of misunderstanding has been breached because of peace weaving. So that is the work of peace weaving. No? We find opportunity to touch people's lives, to bring peace into their lives, that they might live happily and enjoy a life of prosperity and abundance into their lives. So, so that's what I, I see no? or what I experienced during the Parliament of World Religion. So something's becoming mine, because I know you peace weave a lot, and you work in the world, and you've been part of, today was the International Talk, Day of uh, Talk, Talk, did a ritual on, this, on today for peace weaving. More and more people are doing peace weaving. And part of the world's because the world's at war. But in your own country, you guys have now, the, the drums of war have begun to beat, haven't they? How do you deal with that? <laughs> I mean, After, do you hear yes, about no. this with China? Oh, yes. No, yes. Actually, it is, um, there is a trouble of, of, of land grabbing or territorial dispute on the South China Sea. No? Yeah. Although, that is the problem of being greedy and everything. And if we, if, if we fight, no, we will because they're just a small country and we might be in danger of that but mm-hmm. knowing this no, there is someone who is grabbing it might start war but the focus of us no, of 
mm-hmm. of this weaving here in the Philippines is to create our own reality. Because that is the reality that been given or trying to influence us to feed our mind. There is a war. But when I look at a Chinese neighbor, are we at war? No. That, that neighbor is very good to us. So there is no reason for me to fight with them. So it means this is just only the mindset that being fed onto us to to be aggressive, to be uh, fearful or whatever. So I think having peace will allow us to be contented on what we have. It's not only for us, no, but also to other country. The reason why they they are doing this because they think na this is our territorial land and everything. But nobody owns this land, actually. That is the real fact. The earth mm-hmm. is not owned by anyone. It is owned and created by the Creator. And the Creator have given equally to every one of us. Because if we, if we allow this kind of reality to affect our own reality, we will become nothing at all. No? We, will, we will laugh nothing. Actually, Actually, I'm inspired. I'm inspired by you. No, as a creator, you don't care if other will get what you have created, because the mere fact you can create a new one, the most beautiful one. No, I'm pertaining to which school. I know you are the creator of that, and I'm really inspired by by you that you created. But because since you are a creator, you don't mind of giving up which school because now you have created which college before it's pagan tonight now it's pagan world it's getting wider so i think that's the uh, i think the mindset that i want to influence or to share to the people here in the philippines and even into the world to create our own reality if we are a creator we will not worry of something that we lack for tomorrow oh i don't have food whatever because i don't have job if you don't have job we can create no we could create our own job we could create our own prosperity we could create our own abundance and we could create our own happiness and that's uh, i think that's the message that i have learned from the order of peace weaver and to the Korean tradition and even to you as a personal mentor if 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 you consider me as your student because i i'm really am a fan no? i'm really am a fan since the day that i become a Korean in 2006 yes and so that was interesting so thank you no i've always you, you and i've gotten along terrific you've been very much that sort of thing so i want to talk about something else but let me go ahead and, and say 2006 so facebook and one of the things i think people want to understand is the internet really connected people and then, mm-hmm. um, and what I was basically doing is so I was advertising, and I was thinking it was through Google before this sort of thing. I was doing advertising through Google, a lot of advertising. Mm-hmm. And then one day I came across my thing that going to different countries was, you know, it's starting to get a little more expensive in the United States. Not as expensive as it is today, but more expensive. And I tried other countries. And Philippines was one of the least expensive countries to advertise to. Mm-hmm. Mm. And so the advertisement was, so do you want to be a witch? And it was targeted at the Philippine Islands. I mean, you know, from the, uh, Facebook. And so many great people have joined. It. And it, it really transformed what I was doing into much more, much less a Western thing. Because we had made it into South America. We were in South Africa. We were in Europe. But started to bring people in from the Philippines and India at the time. But especially the Philippines, uh, they became such to everybody's pride and joy. I mean, we all love of having this, of, of having that deep connection. It was because the internet led us. I mean, that's important, and you continue to use that. Yeah, uh, and you'll be helping me too. So, but one of the things I want to talk about: you've also spent a lot of. T- so you have something that we're not able to really build, and that is is that you're having your traditional medicines, your people's medicines, more and more recognized by the government. It looks like it. 
Can you talk about that? Oh yes, actually, actually, the internet helps to uncover what is the traditional medicine. Though it's, uh, I could not say that it is popular, but there is still misconception that we in Hilot Academy of Binabaylan and Lunting Agama need to clarify about it. Although it it reaches Filipinos in the U.S. or even in Europe, even in Australia, no? and even in South Africa and some other parts of the world, um, we need to still dig deeper to make connection with the people that lives in the mountains. Because internet is not available all throughout the Philippines, but most of the traditional and authentic form of medicine could be found in the mountain. I remember um, Sir Patrick McCollum that he is also helping the Amazon. I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's part of Central America. So I was able to talk to him also that we need to reach out also to those people in the mountains or in the far-flung areas of the Philippines because they are the only ones that are experiencing the authentic Filipino medicine. Although last um, last month, last month, I was able to attend a congress, no, and mm-hmm. I was able to have an interaction with the Dumaga people. And according to that chieftain that we we have talked to, she said that before they were only able, uh, their people only experiences ten kinds of illnesses, and those ten kinds of illnesses could be treated by the forest medicine. But now. Since because people are exploring and people are climbing out, uh, people from the city are climbing up the mountain and having interaction with them, new illnesses have come to them that their medicine could not be able to, 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 to treat. That's why they go down to the city and integrate with us so that they may, ask, uh, they may be um, treated by the government hospitals for their illness. But the problem is they are being deprived of that because they don't have this birth certificate, their identity, no, because they, they are very tribal. And that's what we in Luntian Agama and, and the government could help them to bridge the gap of the missing gap so that the, they, uh, they could still receive the help from the government. Although as a healer, no, that is the difference between the modern medicine and the traditional medicine. The traditional medicine does not discriminate. It is very mm-hmm. inclusive. Whereas right now, the modern medicine, it will ask you information first before uh, you are being given treatment. No, You are being given treatment. Of course, information yeah. are needed, but do you have any identification? Do you have any bank account? Or you have to pay first before having having been treated. So that's why we are focusing more on on the expansion or the popularity of traditional medicine because in the Philippines, um, it's not that uh, income or economy is not that good. Not all people could avail the modern service of, of healthcare and medical care. So still many people are coming to us, such as yesterday. Yesterday, they are a couple. Although they are capable to go to the hospital, they have, no. But they come to me because the hospital could not give them treatment or relief. So the girl was experiencing asthma yesterday. And when she came, the first time that she came, she's coughing so much, uh, so hard. But after five minutes, I gave her a drink a tea uh, of herbal medicine and right after there she she calmed down and no more coughing and she is also complained about her swelling legs and when she come is she was not able to walk well but after the treatment she was able to to walk well no so there is a difference between because sometimes uh yes probably medical care will 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 you will spend a lot of money but with traditional medicine for me here i only do donation based 
So what, if they have money, they could give me. If they don't have, it's for free. Because what matters to me is their soul, their health, and their life. So that's so folks, the process. So folks, let me let me interject here for a minute. Mm-hmm. What you heard is absolutely is is one of the more authentic stories. We don't hear a lot about that in the United States. We we're facing the same sort of crises, um, but this is how they handle it in more indigenous. And so, if you guys have a few dollars, you should send it Orlando's way because American dollars, British pounds, you know, EUs are hugely different in his country. It, 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 the, the weight that they give them allows them to move is about two to three times more powerful than it is for us. Um, and that's just the difference in economics. And so, yeah, I've talked about that sort of thing. Um, so, and yeah, if you do want to know, just uh, DM us, and we'll tell you how you can make a donation towards Rolando. Let's hope you, you know, if, you can, if you can do that. Um, so let me go ahead and, and offer something. So you do mm. this, and you in, in the medications you talk. Are you you're saying there are people without birth certificates and all that documentation in this modern age? Yes, wow. I, I, yes, because um, they do the traditional birth uh, birthing in the forest in the mountain, so they were not being able to be registered okay. in the government because they are far from the center. Okay, so we of, may have just ran into a little bit of what they've been, what Laura Gonzalez has been talking about is indig, uh, uh, colonial speak. Because I did when I said traditional medicine, I meant indigenous medicine. And you, you sound like you mean traditional medicine sounds like modern medicine or pharmaceuticals. <laughs> I don't know. I was talking about indigenous medicines. It's getting more acceptance, more records. And, you, and, and thank you for that message on traditional. I did not realize how screwed up, even for you guys, traditional medicine is, what you call traditional. But that's not traditional. That's modern medicine. That's pharmaceuticals. I mm. think traditional medicine is the indigenous medicines. Uh, True. But you, but you guys suffer from that, right? You feel colonized, right? You're, the, the people there are a mixture of people, but it's, it's none of this is the original Philippine government, right? You guys are you've created this government it's a democracy mostly a little bit of a corporate uh, corruption yeah i know you have your corruption problem <laughs> yeah you know there, yeah, right you know? actually right now i'm um i don't know i i think i could speak up this is the world and not only in the philippines uh the government agency that used to to promote us to help us the Philippine traditional medicine is not helping at all, really. No, they are. We we have this traditional medicine, but they more acknowledge on homeopathy, um, naturopathy, Ayurveda, traditional Chinese medicine, rather than our own indigenous healers. No, so they are getting fund from the government. I think two billion pesos, but in terms of recognizing the Philippine traditional healers, the Mangi Hilot, if you will go to their website, they only have this of recognized compared to the thousands of acupuncturists, thousands of naturopathists, homeopathists. I think that is commercialized and it's not indigenous. But still, there are many people in the urban areas, in the the rural areas, in the mm-hmm. mountainous areas, that are not being reached by the government. There are still mangihilot. And the worst is, the government is implying law to forbid, uh, to criminalize if you do this kind of healing. If you do the spiritual healing, it's not, it's not allowed by the law because it is unscientific, it is a uh, non-Christian mm-hmm. way. Although, I have reached out to World Health Organization. The World Health Organization defined traditional medicine to be unscientific no? and inexplicable, whether it is, no, it is derived from uh, passing from generation to generation. So it does not need to be, have science. Although um, teaching the history of Hilot, no, the first human being already have their own healing system. And 
those people did not study because that time there is no school. So what they learned, they experienced, they just pass it down to their daughters, to their sons, and to their grandchildren. Then they pass it all along until it reached us today. So the knowledge that this indigenous healer comes from that ancestors that is unlearned, that is not educated, but the method is still effective because it helped us. And there are still some of the illnesses that could not be cured by the modern medicine are being cured by, by the traditional medicine. Although traditional medicine never claims to have any cure because we believe in traditional medicine, every human being has the ability to heal themselves. So our role is just to assist these people to be well by doing some our stuff and our spirituality, our rituals, our prayers, and our movements and our actions. And that is the essence of our indigenous medicine. We could not separate the spirituality to the physical body. Because separating the spirituality to the physical body, it means that of the person. Wonderfully put. I think that now that helps us all to understand. Um, so Reverend Orlando Apu uh, uh, will be mm -hmm. also teaching at Witch College. He'll be teaching, well, part of the Witch Starter Project, which begins January 11th. He'll be teaching us about uh, some of the Filipino witchcraft, along with some other really great teachers. I have some amazing teachers, the best in the business, teaching from right from the heart. Just kind of give us an understanding of it. And later, Filipino magic and, and all of these arts, he's going to share with us to a, to a large degree. Um, it's going to be a very nice opening. It's going to be very much about how to help people. Um, and cyber, as I mentioned, cyber ministry as well, because, uh, as you mentioned. Uh, but let's go ahead and let's talk about peace again. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and talk about uh, the reality building. What can people do to join your reality of peace, the, the idea of peace? How can people connect to this tremendous network you're, you're part of that you and a, an amazing number of people have helped create and that they yeah. kind of, that you, you're the kind of the spiritual caretaker of. Yeah, actually, that's, uh, that's the main essence of the Order of Peace We Wear, to create our own reality. Actually, what uh, we should identify first, what kind of reality are we in now? And then if we have identified the reality that we are in now, the question, the next question will be, are you happy with the kind of reality that you are living right now? So if you are not happy, what could make us happy? No? So in terms of that, it, it is like a ripple effect. If we have determined what we call happy, the, the next question is, is that possible for us to happen? then we list down what are the tools that we need. But as much as possible, in creating our own happiness, we still follow our, uh, our fundamental uh, law of harming none. As long as we don't harm anyone, we can do anything what we want, as long as we maintain this happiness. The problem in the society is the commercialism the one that we see on Facebook, on television, on poster, it's more on every, all of them are very suggestive. In order to be happy, go to this mall or eat this, and etc., etc. But eating on a, such a fancy restaurant, it requires you to have money, no? and expensive. It's not, it's not that, uh, that affordable because you need a lot of money in order to do that. No? But in order to have money, you also need to have job. No? So it will bring us back to ourselves. What can we do in order to have money? What we could do in order to have a happy life? So it, peace weaving is self-empowering. No? We are empowering individuals to find their own reality and use that reality and expand it. No? We could share it. Yes, we could share it. If people in in advertising could influence us of the thought of having this, why not we could also commercialize or advertise peace that everyone could be empowered. I think it's not commercialized. Influence people. 
I think that's mm-hmm. the right term that I could use. Influence people that they could have their own peace. Although my peace, I could not make sure that you will have the kind of peace that I have. But I could share you the step of how I could have it so that you could follow it and find your own peace. So that's the way the order of peace weaver works. And what do you think your role in that is? Do you have a role? Actually, yes. No, it's it's just a title of being a, an order head. But what I feel is really, um, I'm just a fellow or a guide. Because sometimes in the journey, no, for me, for example, I journey alone to America and it's quite lonely. But you think that it it might be safer for me to have a companion. So I'm not a leader, but I'm just a companion. <clears throat> But my students here in the Philippines, they called me as an alarm clock, no? Uh-huh. An alarm ca- an alarm clock will ring their bell on the right time to wake you up. So it means all those topics that I I talk about is a some is just an alarm clock. It's just like a bell to ring to wake up the the sleeping thoughts, the sleeping peace within us. Because peace is just within us. Probably sleeping, that's why we live in chaos. But when it awakes, everything will be fine. You know? I, I'm glad you came to Chicago for me because you, uh, you were brought in. You were one of the most powerful. You called in the ancestors when all, were before all the gods. If we want to have a talk about something I think is truly magical, during the Parliament of World Religions, something I've been waiting for to return to Chicago for a long time. Mm-hmm. Here's Rolando, and he is now calling down the ancestors for, the, for this ritual of multi-pagan groups. And uh, so he gets to call the ancestors before the Parliament of World Religions, which is the, 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 the Council of the Gods. So there he was at the Council of the Gods calling down ancestors for us all. And, of course, we had the Crystal Web, which we've been working on. And I think, and so for people who don't understand, he is this powerful Gregor that's now he's working with. And I've seen it work in the world. So do you, and for me, that was just, I want to thank you for that. I mean, I don't know if there's anything you want to say about it, but for me, I want you to thank you for doing that because that was such a very powerful moment, not just in the parliament, but in my movement of the spells that we work for peace. Oh, actually, yes, I'm so glad that you entrusted me and it was such a great honor to handle that uh, crystal that for the crystal web that we are weaving. And indeed, no, because we believe that our ancestor, the gods, is our also ancestor. They are the one that's where we came from. So for me, technically, on my part, I came from my parents. But digging down to the root, it will end up that every one of us has a divine blood, a divine lineage of divinity of the gods and the goddesses. Whether you are an American, you are a Filipino, a Spanish, African, of whatever race, we are, we are all together one as a children of the divine. And as a children, our parents are divine and they are our ancestors. So that's uh that's what i think of to break off the barrier of of races of language even though we don't understand the language of of other people that speak on different language i see mm-hmm. them that they are still my brothers and sisters we are all siblings of the divinity that we have to be compassionate more about that and actually it's not only limited to humans because we have pets, we have plants, and amazingly, the pet or the cat or the dog, they don't speak English, actually. They just bark. They have different language. But when we communicate seen? with them, we could still understand one another, right? Have you not seen the experiments on YouTube of dogs? Oh, not yet. Look up dogs and press, uh, pressing buttons. They are oh. teaching dogs. Yes, they're teaching dogs how to speak English. 
and cats too. Oh yeah, we've done it with dolphins. Yes, yes. We've done it with chimpanzees. You, the dogs and cats are now pushing buttons. Yes, and I, 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 I've seen that experiment, but also, I uh, know, I've seen also that there is also a device that been attached to a plant to hear them sing. Have you heard about that? Oh sure, I, I actually uh, yes. I think uh, that device is uh, originated from Italy, mm-hmm. so it was an experiment. So I'm I'm excited if we could have also those things here, so that I we could hear literally the song mm-hmm. that plants or trees are singing. Oh sure, and we're learning about the mycelium in the ground and the transference and so much more information. So one of the things I think the Western mind is really disconnected from and that and that you still have you're you're caught in the middle of those two worlds right you have the sort of yeah. this western world has been there for probably over i was looking at 1899 you know is when you know the americans kind of take over and it was way earlier than i thought um and you've had this sort of western government style mm-hmm. and trade and all of that um but a lot of that didn't include the native people, right? It was, you know, it was there. But now you guys got it all kind of tangled into it. Electricity, energy, internet, and so all these indigenous uh, places. So I think one thing we have in the Western mind is a very big separation between spirituality, work, trade, people going on boats, people going on planes, how you handle your money, banking, ID, and the more mm-hmm. natural lives that you continue, the more, the more lives that you've uh, you've lived in the past. You mm-hmm. know that we see it. We see it as like being in the past because it's not completely modernized. And you guys have, but you guys are happy. You, you have peace. You have a lot of good energy. Can you talk to about that, or is there, you know, or oh, yeah. am I just Absolutely. imagining it? Um, actually, um, yes, no. For us in Lunti Angagama, I, I could not talk because everybody seems, everyone here in the Philippines seems okay with their life. We we are prone to struggle, to 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 live in poverty, and we could manage it, no. And even those in the natives, no, they are happy about themselves. The reason mm-hmm. why aggression or rising up start when somebody will enter and try to dominate them so it means each one of us has a warrior spirit has a warrior spirit and recently in my class no but um i have a topic since you have said that we are being colonized and 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 my words here is i called it we are being raped because right now me my identity or citizenship is questionable because Philippines is not our own language. The Spaniards gave it to us in honor of King Philip. And the first Filipino was not native. You know, being Filipino before is if you are Spaniards who live in the Philippines at that time, and if you give birth to a child, that child is the original Filipino. So... Mm -hmm. Spaniards who were born in the Philippines are the first Filipinos and we, it's not us. And those who are native, they are called Indios. And Spanish who marry uh, who marry an, a local, an Indio, will become a mestizo. So for us who are living right now, if you trace back our real origin, we are all mixed up. There is no more identity of being a Filipino or real people who live in this land. But when I pray and meditate, I think it was the will of the divine that we have this multiple bloods in our in our mm-hmm. life. Now we are Spanish, we are American, we are Japanese, and everything we are all mixed up. Even European also came, no, no yeah. and enjoyed the natives. Yes. Um, enjoyed the natives uh, it's because of <clears throat> of a means of peace weaving we could not harm other people because we are part of them 
So we could claim that we have your blood as American, we have a blood as Spanish and everything. Mm -hmm. And because people have known me of, decolon uh, of being a decolonizer, we have this movement of decolonizing ourselves, of bringing, of giving people, Filipino people around the world to use native names, Filipino names. Because Chinese in America, they have English name and they have their Chinese name. But as Filipino, we are very comfortable and we did not know. But now they are open of embracing our own identity. So they are coming back to the Philippines to learn our culture and bring it back again to the, the place where they came from. So as part of that decolonizing, we are, uh, uh, we are introducing the Filipino God, that we have our God. We have our own medicine. We have our own writing system besides from having our own language and we could also practice to have our own names to call by people that we are filipino and and that's the mission that we are doing right now but working here in the philippines is very hard because you know ah that you are just a filipino and we speak the same language maybe you are just creating it and we don't care gotcha. if we study well, et cetera, et cetera. I got gotcha. you. That would be that would be difficult. Let me tell you, even Americans change their names. I was always very fortunate to get a very American name. Nine mm -hmm. letters at Ted Hubbard. Um, yeah. So because if, even if we have, I mean, it doesn't matter what country. Uh, we love to shorten those names. You know. Mm. Right. Uh, so that's a very American trait. Well, Americans erase their identity. We're in a constant pattern to erasing our identity to whatever is the culture of the moment. America is not a settled country. It's like, it's like you said, it's, you had a very interesting idea of being so many different, of so many different nationalities, so many different bloods, so many different places in the world came to the Philippines. It still does. I mean, you're a huge trade port. People from all over the world come to the Philippines. It's like you guys do tremendous good for the world. You know, it's a no, tremendous place you. of peace. Huh? Yeah, it's thank you for that, yes. Huh? I said thank you for, for telling that, and I'm so flattered and very proud of. Um, oh, no problem. Uh, that's what we do. So, okay, so one last, let's cover one more last thing. So, I want you to do a peace prayer for us, but first, you're you're very much the part of this sort of uh, the great the Corellians. And one of the things I think, can you express to people? This is one of the very first people that I've had on that really means it, like deeply and spiritually. I know you understand this concept of the great family. Mm. And you say that you just applied that whole idea to the Philippines. That you are really the embodiment. You're a, you're you know you are, you are seen as brother and sister and friend and all sorts of things by thousands of people in the world. And sometimes I know, you know, it's hard to believe that sometimes because you're just doing your work. But you are. You, you, and, and there are people all over the world who are so glad that they know you and that they're a part of your life. Hmm? Yeah, actually, I just considered myself, no. Actually, um, I don't know how to react on that because for me, everything is unbelievable or I'm not aware of, because what I did is I'm just becoming a member. I'm doing my duty as a member, but mm -hmm. I was not able to think na this, this, that is how they think of me, that I inspired them. Although, mm -hmm. in reality, I am inspired by everyone because they are active on the tradition. You are doing your job, Lord Don, Sir Ed, and, and right now, no? the current leadership mm -hmm. so i think everything that's being a family i think now this is being a family all of us has a role to serve not only the time of being a child is done no that we feed on our mother but when we grow we work and we give back and i think this is what i'm doing giving back to my tradition, to my spiritual family, what they have given me. It's a part of growing, of expansion. And family, as a family, spiritual family, 
even though I have another family, it will not uh, disconnected because family is family. It just only expands. And I believe on that expansion and our connection will remain forever. Although I have this personal message with Lord Don during the parliament, he said, even though I'm far or I'm gone, he said, as a tradition, you know, we could talk to the spirit. And even in the spiritual realm, we could be together, we could communicate. And that's what I'm thankful that I've learned from the Corellian tradition for you, from Lord Don, and to everyone else. That's why I, I am so glad to be part of this and even the pagan world. Oh, thank you. And so, I think I want to finish up. Would you mind closing us with the peace prayer? Okay, yes, 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 please. So I invite everyone to pray with me and bless the world with the energy of peace. So let us pray. There is one power in the universe, and we are the perfect manifestation of that power. And for as such, we pray for peace. We pray for peace, we pray for love, and we pray for stability. We pray that all the people around the world be blessed with peace. Peace that promotes justice, justice that follows discipline and orderliness. Discipline and orderliness as a result of understanding. Understanding as a product of knowledge and knowledge as a fruit from the seed of love. O oh, great supreme divine spirit, we come before you and ask you to bless us, your children, with courage, bravery, strength, and endurance, so that through these blessings, we may be able to overcome all forms of evil, fear, hatred, terror, violence, warfare, and worries around the world. By the power of love that gives us life, may peace prevail on earth. May all the people around the world be blessed with peace. May all the inhabitants of Mother Earth enjoy the blessings of love as we create and manifest this in our life by our unified will with aim no harm to anyone and in full gratitude to the divine. We accept and receive this and it is so, so mote it be. Mayari na pag asatin. Go back to you, Sir Ed. Wow, so what it be? So, folks, there we go. We've, we've come to another end of another live episode. Uh, this time with Rolando, we will have him back. There's going to be more to do it. We're on uh, most nights every night. Tomorrow we'll be back again. And uh, blessed be, folks, and and good night. And good night, everyone. Thank you, sir. Ed.